Okay, <laughs> mid July 2021 uh, pepper grow update in deep, deep, deep shade. So last year I had mixed results. I had some pepper plants produce quite well, some Brazilian varieties, Fidalgo Roja. Uh, that's a pretty reliable one. And I think they're more forgiving when it comes to uh, deep shade. Uh, anyway, so this year I tried a couple things differently. I did um, a slow release fertilizer and I put down this fabric and the purpose of the fabric was to compete with this jasmine. So this is uh, ground cover jasmine and it just takes over everything, uh, especially during the summer. And um, because of that, really, I think it competes for water, competes for um, nutrients. And anyway, uh, I, I, this ground cover, um, this fabric is really helping a lot with that. And I, I mowed it down like heck, took a lot of effort. Um, so things are, some of them are producing very well. Uh, this is an apricot variety from Sea Spring. Um, let's see, this one I've been really excited about. This is uh, Swiss chocolate, classic variety that I don't think gets enough love out there. It's producing really well, even in this deep shade. Um, <clears throat> uh, what else do I have that's worth showing off? Um, this is, I don't know, an unknown super hot. I think I know what it is, but I won't. Uh, call it because I'm not confident based on its shape this is an unknown Fidalgo Roja cross that is an F2 and so I've got that's a chocolate variety that's coming out I've got a couple of reds I've got your classic kind of peach color and then if I go all the way through this jungle I'll come over here to one that I'm pretty excited about which is this olive green color taste is decent and it's definitely uh, in that Vidalgo Roja uh, realm of flavors and then I've got turtle claw here which um, didn't produce very well at first but now is doing really great excellent branching excited about that got a couple different uh, yellow reapers and yellow primos and they just have, yellow reapers and yellow primos have the most consistent tails of any strain I am aware of. And I'm pretty excited about what will be kind of a late season production. And I'll bounce around and we'll one more thing. That's turned out kind of interesting. This is another F2. This is Bahamian goat times habanero. So it's coming out. Kind of exactly like you'd expect, except for some that appear to have some other genes mixed in there. So I'll find out more about that later. I don't have a ton of production off of those. Here's another one of the uh, F2 varieties of Fidalgo Roja. This one has some cracking on the skin, which is kind of interesting. And I think that's most of what I want to say, other than to kind of summarize that you can grow in deep shade if you have a long season, uh, like I do here in Florida. Um, and if you get a head start, you know, growing in a tent early on, and if you do a good job fertilizing, you'll need a good amount of nitrogen, which a lot of people stay away from for good reason, because it can lower productivity, but um, you want a lot of foliage in the shade. You want to be able to help with that photosynthesis um, and you know if if you've got anything that's competing for nutrients or water you're gonna want to cut back uh, on their ability to grow uh, by using things like this fabric um, this is wicked ghost this is supposedly an f1 variety uh, and it's all right it's definitely it's very stingy hot which I don't love um, but I've also been pretty impressed at its productivity. And this is a part of the yard that l literally gets no direct sun, um, only indirect. So that's pretty good.